SpaceX Starlink faces Google's secret weapon. Lasers versus satellites? Who wins? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we're coming to the end of some fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking Space, Talking SpaceX, Starlink, and of course, tech. Today is a technology day, including SpaceX, as well as Google Alphabet, let's say. Really interesting article that I was reading, and the question is, does Alphabet or Google take an opportunity to cash in on their lasers that they've been using in the past for their Loon program, but now use them for high-speed internet on the ground? No wires, just lasers. And they're saying that they should be able to take over SpaceX Starlink completely in the rural areas just by capacity alone. And I wanna go through this a little bit with you and give you my thoughts. And then of course, at the end, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this down below? Do you think that there'll be a competitor? Or do you think that there'll be the same thing as Jeff Bezos's Project Kuiper? A pipe dream. I wanna know once again, what you think down below. So before we get into any of this, this article, and then of course me giving you my commentary, and then finally hearing from you down below, I just wanna say if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that is very helpful. Don't forget to share the channel, share the video with your friends, family, colleagues, Facebook, Reddit, wherever you frequent. I would really appreciate that. That helps grow the channel. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on the channel, click this little button. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink content specific, I think it's 450 now. <laughs> 450 videos I put together for you. I'll put a link over here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click over there and you'll find a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, how to use things, but more importantly, the why behind all of it. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying, Alphabet, the parent company of Google and YouTube, has spun off Tara, a project from the X Lab, into a standalone entity. When they say X Lab, it has nothing to do with X and Elon Musk. Keep that in mind. X Labs or X has been around since 2010, I believe. It is a think tank, let's say, that does moonshot type of projects where they just test things out and just see what sticks. Throw a whole bunch of stuff on the wall once again and see what sticks. It continues. Tara aims to take on Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink by delivering internet to rural areas, not through satellites, but with laser beams. It is a bold play to bring high-speed connectivity where cables do not reach, but Alphabet's spotty track record on big ideas cast a shadow over its chances. Tara emerged from X, once again, not that X, <laughs> <laughs> the lab that spawned the failed Loon project. Those internet balloons that ate millions of dollars before fizzling in 2021. Repurposing Loon's laser tech, Tara uses ground-based boxes, roughly the size of traffic lights, to shoot data at 20 gigabits per second over 20 kilometers. That's a lot and a great distance. That smokes SpaceX Starlink's typical 100 to 220 megabits per second for home users. In the Congo, it connected two cities across a river, moving over 700 terabytes in 20 days, enough to stream the Super Bowl in 4K about 140,000 times. It's up and running in 12 countries already. The goal, internet for 3 billion people still offline, especially in rural spots where SpaceX Starlink has been a lifeline. SpaceX Starlink boasts over 6,750 satellites as of early 2025, providing internet to millions at $120 a month plus $349 for a dish. It's actually about 5 million now or over 5 million worldwide. It's a lot. 
Tara claims a cheaper edge. No satellites to launch, just laser units promising more bandwidth for less. A new silicon chip shrunk to fingernail size cuts the cost from $30,000 for Tara's prototype to an estimated $5,000 per unit, making it leaner than SpaceX's satellite-driven fleet. Google's parent company, Alphabet, has said that Tara could outpace SpaceX Starlink's capacity by 10 or even 100 times in dense areas. But Alphabet's history raises red flags. Loon flopped, too messy to manage balloons at 20 miles up. Google's fiber vowed to transform broadband, then shrank when the going got tough. Tara's lasers need a clear path. Fog, birds, or a shaky tower can kill the link. SpaceX Starlink satellites shrug that off, orbiting at 550 kilometers. Tara's crew is just 24 people. SpaceX Starlink has thousands and a global footprint. Matching that scale feels like a pipe dream. That said, Tara's got a smart angle. Its light-based tech could fill rural voids where fiber's too costly to lay. Tests in India and Africa prove it works, and Alphabet's holding a stake while Series X Capital funds the spin-off. The numbers don't lie, 20 gigabits is legit, and the cost cuts could hit home in a desperate region. Still, Alphabet's habit of hyping and then dumping projects hangs heavy. Starlink's delivering now, and with over 6,750 satellites and counting, Tara's chasing a moving target. With Google and YouTube's parent known for cutting bait when things get rough, this Starlink rival looks like a long shot, sharp, but probably doomed to fade. Apps, I agree with that, 110%. You know, this happens all the time with Google. Some people don't know this and, you know, let me just bring up a couple of them and you'll probably remember. Do you remember Google Reader? Google Reader was around for a long time. It was an RSS aggregator. They killed it in 2012. There was a lot of people that used it and then poof, it was just terminated. Also, Google Wave. Does anyone remember Google Wave? That was a big thing. Everyone was like, wow, it was like a real-time collaboration platform. It was basically taking email and chat and docs and combine them all together so you can collaborate with someone. Yeah, killed in 2012. Do you remember Google Plus? <laughs> it was like this social media network that's supposed to rival Facebook. Yeah, killed in 2019. And then of course we have like Google Hangouts. Remember Google Hangouts? That was a big thing. You had messaging and you had video calling and all of this stuff. Yeah, killed in 2019 also. These are just a few. There is a lot. They're very much so like Microsoft. When Microsoft buys something, well, they're making it, but when they buy something, they ruin it. Same thing with Minecraft. What did Microsoft do? They bought it and then all of a sudden it kind of turned blah. Then they bought Skype. Right? Skype was around for 23 years. What happened to Skype? Doomed. <laughs> As of when the ball drops this year on New Year's, any data that you have on Skype will be lost because the project is terminated. It's not like disband and then someone else is going to pick. No, it is terminated. Skype is gone. So if you've been using Skype over the last two decades, at the end of this year, you have to find a new VoIP calling service. That's just the way it is. These companies do this all the time and Alphabet or Google is notorious for doing the same thing, especially with their SaaS products. SaaS, software as a service. SaaS products are one of those things that they can throw a bunch of money at, they can create, make money at it, and if it works good, if it doesn't work, they just disband it or they just terminate it completely. Just like we're talking about with Google Reader and Wave and Hangouts and Google Plus and all the rest of this stuff. You can probably name another 10 that they have discontinued, let's say. So, do I think that Google's parent company, Alphabet, their Tara is going to be something that will be a competitor to SpaceX Starlink? The answer is absolutely no. It is basically the equivalent to Jeff Bezos' pipe dream. Project Kuiper. That will never get off the ground. They'll keep talking about it and eventually they're just going to cancel it. It's just not going to happen. Period. 
They just will not be able to put enough satellites on orbit. And with this, knowing that it is laser based on the ground, you still have to connect. Even if it's 20 kilometers, you have to connect to connect to connect. You have to form a massive mesh network on the ground. The same thing that you have overhead with these satellites. The thing is, is these satellites, once again, we're getting close to 7,000 of them as of now, are everywhere. How do you get this ground base on the top of a mountain? You can't. It's once again, the same thing as a cell tower. Yes, is the communication faster? Absolutely. But it has even a worse track record when it comes to stability. The reason being, like they said in the article, if a bird flies through the laser, the communication is dead. Or if there's mist or fog or just anything obstructs it, the connection goes down immediately. It is terminated. And then it has to retrain resync and then send the bad error packets back and then start over again. Once it gets connected, it's going to go fast, of course, like we saw 20 gigabits. It's a ton. But the problem, once again, is it's just not going to be able to do it because they're going to have to put towers everywhere. It's just stupid, in my personal opinion. Now, can you connect two villages, like they said, in the Congo over a river and not have to run wires using lasers? Absolutely. It is perfect for that. But as a competitor to SpaceX Starlink, it's a joke. That's my personal opinion. What say you? I personally would love to see the competition. I would love to see Jeff Bozo over there actually get Project Kuiper off the ground, literally. But they won't. And I do not think that there's going to be any competitor to SpaceX Starlink going forward. They're just too far in the front of things. They are too far ahead. Like they're saying, they're a moving target. They're moving quite quickly. And it's 7,000 satellites with hopes and dreams of 43,000 satellites. It's just not going to happen. That's my opinion, right? So once again, what say you down below? Let's have a discussion. What do you think? What do you think? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my shirts, my tees, my books, everything that I've created over the many years. Check out the merch. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop will get you right there. See if there's something there that you like. If there is, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Preferably not with Google's pipe dream. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. 